everyone. I'll be as quick as possible. No one. One's hungry. I'm an appetite. <laughs> so, uh, so my project uh, it's called These Cobras. Uh, unearthing the Chilean spirit from the global underground. The basis of my project uh, was basically retracing the Latin American influence in underground electronic music uh, around the world. Uh, my grant was in collaboration with MTVU, which is MTV's um, basically partner institution that helps grants to students. Um, and it, particularly this grant um, is designed to help explore the power of music as a cultural force abroad. So, original objectives. <laughs> Develop a sonic profile of Chile's electronic music culture, examining its, its importance in influencing the global underground. I was originally inspired by a cohort of musicians who were essentially exiled or fled Chile during the dictatorship regime and relocated in Europe, in Germany, in Spain, Switzerland, uh, became very influential electronic musicians. Um, highlight Chile as the flagship Latin American nation for electronic music, seeing that Santiago is one of the largest communities um, and scenes for electronic music in Latin America. Uh, emphasize the ways in which niche music communities can forge international and transcultural ties and rejoin Chile's underground with its musical exports by linking historical milestones with their current representations. Meaning that Chile actually does have a, a pretty rich past in electronic music. Um, there are some really interesting inventors from the 50s and 60s who are some of the first electronic musicians really in the world. And they were making like crazy musical crap using sampled sounds and using analog machines to basically make experimental music, some of which is very strange and cool. Uh, of course, those things change. And uh, my updated objectives, not to say the other ones were negated, but there's some different things that I've noticed. Um, so really, it became more about the local scene. Instead, I, I kind of started with this macrocosmic idea of how music, electronic like music, function around the world based on its Latin American influence, which is impossibly difficult to pinpoint at any given moment. I mean, the world's music culture is totally um, diverse and comprises a variety of genres, especially electronic music, it goes super, super deep. So um, I thought that digging into the local scenes of Santiago and Valparaiso actually might give me a better uh, perspective on how to engage cultures and communities like this around the world. Um, so Discobres kind of became a platform for artists to tell their stories. Uh, and so I spent a lot more time actually just interviewing people, sitting down with them, uh, sort of creating these profiles around the artists that are in this, uh, in this region and um, build a larger narrative around electronic music in Latin America and other global regions outside of the music capitals in the US and Europe. So you know, start to focus on, on communities outside of Berlin and New York and London where music, electronic music is really sort of, um, sort of an obvious genre is what everyone listens to right now, but um, the sounds sort of become homogenous over time. And so thinking about ways to bring in other communities that have very equally strong musicians and communities but are maybe underrepresented. What did I do? I ask myself this every day. Um, the profile artists, record labels, vinyl shops, and spoke to each about their music, their workflow, their life. Um, this was informal interviews with Chileans and Chilean European artists from various genres and communities. Um, I would just go over to their houses or their studios and take photos chat it out, you know, it was really chill. Um, and that was what was great about it, because as an artist, I was able to talk to people from a perspective that they understood without it sounding like I was trying to examine them from a cultural perspective. I think a lot of times artists feel sort of um, vulnerable when people like give them very formal interviews. So this was like, hey, can we meet up? I just want to talk a, a bit about, you know, what your experiences have been here in, in Santiago. Um, and then of course, attending lots and lots of parties and events, being part of the audience, observing the way that people are interacting with each other, are, are interacting with the artists on stage, um, which is always really interesting because it, it's quite subtle the way that people move throughout these spaces and venues. Um, but you start to notice differences in the way that people drink, for example, what they're, you know, how, what time they show up to the party, uh, how many friends they come with, uh, how engaged they are with the artists, and are they dancing? There's always a weird thing. Who's dancing? What are they wearing? You know, things like this are actually really indicative of the way that culture is sort of. Uh, put themselves together. And um, I, I did a curated DJ mix series, which I recently started, um, which is like, a, I want it to be monthly, but I need to kind of get more traction on that, um, including artists from Chile, Argentina, Peru, Mexico, kind of opening up the borders a little bit to talk about Latin American electronic music in general. 
and of course, uh, social media posts sharing content. So basically, I had a variety of angles that I was exploring this, which I was exploring this. So this is the website. Finally got it up and designed in around April. Um, basically, there's two sections. There's features, uh, which are larger profilings of artists, and then there are sort of music posts, which are like the mixes. This one, actually, I did myself. That was a DJ mix I did, and um, I got to meet Cow, who was a really awesome uh, Peruvian artist, uh, Mika Martini, who's a great um, label owner and musician. Um, I, have, I think I have about 20, 21 posts on there now. It's growing slowly, but the Facebook page, the Twitter, the Instagram, <laughs> the SoundCloud, you know, I mean, so these are the kind of the basic things for making these editorial things. And also I had the Fulbright MTBU blog, which uh, was sort of a little more generalized um, kind of explanation of what I was doing there, but the discovery site is really, is really much more thorough. A few observations about Chile's electronic music scene. This is a little photo from uh, from Nido Vinilos. Um, it's really turning from a social music industry into a bit more of an entrepreneurial industry as the scene grows, which is which is the case around the world. Uh, artists are, are really leveraging their abilities and their skills to um, to really create uh, platforms for themselves rather than it just being about building communities. You know, people also don't want to make music for free anymore, which is good because you know assigning more value onto what they're doing. Um, the internet, of course, and traveling helps to break down these borders, as well as lots of international collectives. Uh, there's a collective in Mexico called NAFI. There's Mexico in, I think they're from North Africa, called NAN. Um, and I know a, a label owner here who's trying to sort of set up a collective like this where they're based in a city and they use those, you know, they sort of take cues from what the city does um, musically, but they sort of incorporate people from all over the world. So these global collectives are popping up everywhere. And uh, underground parties, independent radio, there is still a DIY culture here that's very big. People, you know, kind of en enable themselves rather than waiting for other people to give them money and do things. Um, everything not indie, however, if you go to a venue here, you'll notice that there are brands slathered on every surface. And so, you know, it's sort of problematic because when an artist is flying, you take photos of them at a venue, you have Bacardi written behind them or you still have written behind them in massive letters. And so there's always a relationship between the artists and unfortunately, the amount of money that the venue is making for having them. So that does segment things a little bit. Um, however, there is obviously more and more space for innovation. There's lots of new galleries and museums popping up. Alternative culture um, is still very strong here in Chile. As I'm sure if you've walked around the scene, you know, people are not afraid to express themselves. So that's really important. Um, so these are a couple of the artists, Mika Martini, is the inside of Nido Vinilos, which is a really great vinyl shop. Uh, Renata from Auraki. Lars, who is actually Danish, but he runs a Chilean late net label called Klang. Uh, this is Iñaki Munoz, who was playing at, a, uh, at an expo at the Centro Cultural de España. This was from the Picnic Electronique and uh, Parque de las Esculturas. And one of my musical heroes, Ricardo Villalobos, playing at that park. I got to be backstage, but that was really cool. Modular Machines, White Sample has this crazy setup, which each of these little things are modules that make different sounds and modifies them. And he, he goes, he travels the world taking his rig with him, which is really cool. It's portable, it's like a little suitcase and you can travel around. So these are like little moments that I thought were really nice photographing with um, A plus playing at that expo as well. So a couple of the challenges for artists right now, the number and quality of performance spaces and the low pay for DJs and performers, Again, market segmentation by the corporations, high manufacturing and shipping costs because everything that crosses the Andean Cordillera is taxed very highly, especially books and especially vinyls, so cultural items are taxed very highly. Um, instruments and gear are subsequently very expensive, and I find it, in, I've, I've, I've had a couple conversations, well, I've had a lot of conversations about this, but it is a point of contention for some people, but I say that it's difficult to trace a musical history from traditional sounds to contemporary music, and by that I don't mean that, um, and I had, a, I had a conversation at the University of Valparaiso last week about this, and these are the people, you know, that's kind of, it can be taken offensively, and I didn't mean it to be that way, but the thing is that um, during the dictatorship, um, it was very much, a lot of the traditional culture was essentially erased from Chile's textbooks, and so they were kind of restarting at the beginning of the era, of a, late 90s and early 2000s, especially with electronic music. So it's difficult to hear sounds that were originally from Chile kind of from a traditional standpoint or folkloric sounds and how they're incorporated into the electronic music now. Although now people are 
beginning to find those things historically, dig them up and put them back into, into their music. Um, obviously things like cumbia, electro cumbia from the early 2000s is really strange and cool. Um, and there's lots of incorporations, but in kind of a, in a, in a more modern sense, it, you don't listen to something and say like, oh, this is particularly Chilean electronic music, but there are a lot of great artists that are here making electronic music. Um, so opportunities, the artists are optimistic, the audiences are, passion the audiences are passionate, um, the music industry is democratized, everyone likes to you know, be able to share their music with their fellow musicians. Artists are participating a lot in international music tech events like New Tech Montreal and Sonar Barcelona. There's actually a new vinyl press, the first uh, in Chile in, a, in a quite a long time. It, um, they're about to found there. They're about to start operating in a couple months. I met them last week, and um, a lot more influential women and LGBTQ artists, which are pushing a lot of the social conventions of the electronic music scene, which has largely been male dominated by these, you know, kind of macho DJ guys uh, who really take over the stage. And um, you know, the audiences aren't always completely open to female DJs, for, for example, and that's, that's changing a lot now, too. Um, play some music for you. This is a techno house artist with a kind of an experimental... <laughs> So Renata actually basically scat sings. She's kind of invented her own language. Uh, so none of these things are real words. And um, Daniel Jeffs is actually a really famous electronic artist from Chile, who super low key guy, but he helped start the like minimal electronic music movement here. So. A mix of minimal techno and strange jazz singing. So that's pretty cool. Um, next is Egg Loop, who uh, has a bunch of records released on a cassette tape label called No Problema Tapes. Um, and he does his entire thing with this little tiny roll in SP404, which I think is fascinating. <laughs> sounds of like Atlanta trap music mixing in with reggaeton um, and then which is huge in Chile right now if you haven't heard reggaeton here then you've not left your home uh, and uh, so she's kind of combining these worlds and she's she's, she's a really interesting artist um, she's got this fashion thing going on it's cool <laughs> scene of people, despite the techno, and they're all kind of stiff, but they party really hard, and it's, it's a good time. Um, well, you know, the audiences are much more passionate about the music they're listening to, and everyone has a really good time. Um, this is a strange, obscure record I found by a girl named Florencia Lira, um, and she's now making more acoustic work, but I found this album from 2004, 
sort of reflections um, and ideas moving in is Santiago's ele independent electronic music scene is certainly on its way back up, making a comeback from the early 2000s boom, which, which is where you saw some of those older guys from that video are actually people that live in Europe now, but they come back to Chile during the summer to DJ and you know see their families and whatnot. But uh, the scene, local scene, has definitely grown with a lot of the younger artists. Um, and I. When, whereas some of the older artists that stayed behind in Chile during that time have a bit more cynical view of the industry and its ability to help them, you know, get their work out, the younger artists are much more empowered. I think seeing that they were able to use the internet to share their music. Um, again, the global collectives around the world are growing. There's lots of interest in Latin America's electronic music scene. Festivals are popping up everywhere. There's a new electronic music festival in Cuba. Actually, that's really cool. So. This part of the world has a lot more attention on it than, uh, than it, I mean, Cuba's way far away from Santiago, but the Latin American scene is, is quite large. Um, and despite the corporate influence, artists are leveraging, are leveraging brands and businesses in their favor. Liz, for example, she models for Puma occasionally, but they let her basically do all of her own makeup and style. And so, you know, they have relationships with these brands that are really cool and, and open. Um, and ideas for the future for these cobres. Um, higher city editors in other cities around Latin America, Buenos Aires, Lima, Mexico City, Montevideo, where I know people in each of these cities that have a pretty good view of what's going on, and hopefully they'll write for me. Um, press and event partnerships with people like, like Utech and Unsound and Sonar, these global electronic music festivals. Um, and hopefully, you know, be able to you know start bringing some of these artists that I've met here from Chile <coughs> back to New York to perform and maybe do like you know, an exchange or even send artists from New York down here to play. Um, you know, if you can find funding for that, I think it's the out there, you know, there's some funding for arts like that, especially with the music tech relationship. So uh, I have to say thank you to Fulbright Program and MTVU for, for uh, basically letting me listen to music for nine months and write about it. Um, Christian Lopez, who was my advisor at Universidad de Valparaiso, he always made me really great coffee when I went over there, which is hard to come by. And uh, Miko Martini, Jessica Alisu Campos, uh, who introduced me to a ton of people before I even came to Chile. Pablo Salas, Maximo Campos, um, guys that run uh, labels and radio shows. They featured me on, on their radio show, uh, Campo Equipo. Francisco, the owner of Nino Vinilos, Marco Latrac, Emily McClone, who introduced me to a ton of people, and basically all the artists and everyone I met here who were incredibly nice and helpful and, and lovely people. So, thanks. parties in New York, but 
it, everything, I mean, it's a bigger, it's a bigger city, so it's just, there's a lot more going on, I'd say, in New York, but it's not, there's, there's equal quality, though, so it's just, things are a little bit more compact. What you have here is, like, tiny little collectives that throw big parties, like, once every month or so, and they're really, you know, it's, like, a lot of label collaborations to try to get more people to come to these events, so every weekend, you'll have, like, three big parties, like, every night, there'll be, like, one or two things to do, um, so I think I think once you have more venues that start to cater to electronic music, I think it's there's it's still stigmatized a bit to be like you know it seems drug scene and stuff like that. But it's really it's really not like that. I mean, people are going to do whatever they do at a party, but at the same time, it, these, these spaces are totally safe and um, people are just going out to listen to music. So, um, but comparatively, I'd say you know New York is a much more global center. Of course, it's easier to get to, it's cheaper to get to, people pass through all the time. So. You know, being on the other side of the world here, I think that over time more and more artists will start coming through Santiago to perform. And um, for example, I saw a New York artist, uh, Julia Holter, a few weeks ago, and she's never played down here, but for the first time. So people are starting to come to Santiago because there's, when the audience wants it, people come to play for them. So it's cool. It's, it's nice to see it growing. I think in like the next couple of years, things are really going to start to pick up in, a, in, a, in an awesome way. And Lima's cool too. Lima is kind of another scene that's got a lot of, a little grungier, but it's cool. Did you, did you ever get to DJ for a club? I didn't DJ, I, I didn't, so I tried not to leverage my own artistry here. That was, I was trying to keep these projects separate because uh, a lot of times when people come down to Santiago and like there are some label owners, you know, they were like, oh, I want to get a record out, et cetera, et cetera. So I didn't want to come on to people. And that's one thing that's like, oh, I'm an artist too, you know, like you want to hear my music? It's you know, I didn't want it to be about me. Mm -hmm. um, I would in the future. I'd be happy to teach it. But uh, I, I tried to just, you know, I made a lot of music while I was here, for sure. But I, I kind of kept the DJ thing out of it. I didn't want to like promote myself and stuff like that. A little comp it gets a little complicated. But uh, it's a fun. It would be a fun city to DJ. The party started like, you know, midnight and go to like eight. So. <laughs> so cool. Thank you guys. <laughs>